President Trump announcing the FBI and the Justice Department will review the prosecutor's decision to drop all 16 charges against the actor Jesse Smollett. He's calling the situation outrageous and embarrassing. The Empire actor was accused of staging an assault on himself, and Chicago's top officials still maintain that those charges, those allegations, were a hoax. Adding to the confusion about this entire case, the state attorney for Cook County, Kim Fox, who recused herself, said that she believes her office could have proven that Smollett was guilty. The court has not found him guilty. I believe based on the facts and the evidence that was presented in the charging decision made by this office, this office believed that they could prove him guilty. CNN correspondent Ryan Young is following all these new developments, and, and it has, it's confusing for me. It has to be confusing for folks at home. <laughs> everybody involved, the prosecutors, the cops, etc., say, well, they believe he's guilty, and yet the charges were dropped. Right, and that's the big story here because everybody seems sort of unsatisfied with the way this ended. And really, you're seeing everyone sort of take out their frustration very publicly. The only thing that didn't happen publicly in this case is why the charges were dropped. That sort of happened in secret. We were told about that emergency, emergency hearing on Tuesday. We all rushed down to court. And then Jesse Smollett gave that statement, which didn't seem to satisfy many people in the public in terms of how we arrived to this situation. Jim, first of all, a lot of this has developed during your hour of the show. So let's take people back to January. This is when we found out that according to a police report that Jesse Smollett said he was walking back from a subway when he was attacked by two men. He said that they put a noose around his neck, that they punched him, they screamed racial and homophobic slurs at him, and then they also said this is MAGA country. And that sort of made everybody sort of pay more attention to this case. Twelve detectives worked around the clock on this to try to figure out exactly what happened. And then almost a month later, sort of, so many shoes started to drop here. We found out detectives had circled uh, uh, two men who they thought were involved in this case. They started giving police information after they were sweated in a box for about 47 hours. Detectives were talking to them. They started telling police all the information that they needed to, to hear in terms of they believed that Jesse Smollett set this whole thing up. They went before a grand jury. That grand jury helped them get to that 16-count indictment. And then, of course, there was the pushback back and forth between Jesse Smollett and the police department because Jesse Smollett and his team actually said in court they wanted cameras there so everyone could see that he's innocent. And then they haven't even stopped at this point. Just about a half hour ago, his, one of his attorneys talked uh, about this case and what's going on so far. We have nothing to be concerned about because there was nothing on our end to uh, request this, to do anything improper. And to my knowledge, nothing improper was done. So what, this is what we do know, Jim. From the very beginning, though, we didn't believe that Jesse Smollett would go to jail. You're talking about a first-time offender. You're talking about someone who's been upstanding in the community. A, a lot of people here believe in Jesse Smollett. But the police department, for its part, always felt like it had the information and a strong case. And we started hearing yesterday from sources that the FBI could take a look at this. And we weren't at the point where we could get to reporting it. And now you have Trump sort of confirming it for all of us. Let's not also forget that about a month before all this happened, there was a letter sent to the Empire set. They're still investigating that portion of this as well. So this might not all go away and shoes continue to drop. One other thing here, the case was sealed after the charges were dropped. So many people paying attention to that portion of it. We do know today at 930 there's going to be a court case. We could get some more information a little later on, Jim. Got to hold on for this one. Ryan Young, thank you for following this case. We bring, let's bring in CNN legal analyst and criminal defense attorney Joey Jackson. So, so Joey, you, you'll, you'll sometimes see the feds get involved right. in a crime where there aren't charges locally you know, more serious crimes, like a cop shooting or something, and you get into, like, we're civil rights violated or something like that. So, so for how unusual would it be for the feds to get involved in a case like this? Very. So everything about this is unusual. So from a federal involvement perspective, the federal government certainly has a role as it relates. You heard Ryan Young speaking about a parent letter that Jesse Small is alleged to have sent to himself. Now, that's federal because you put it into the stream of inter interstate commerce. You put it into the mail. That's where the federal role is. Now, in terms of the sealing of this case, I think if anybody's going to get it, the media may not, pursuant to the hearing they're having, I think the federal government will in their investigation. Now, that's where their role is. In terms of investigating the legitimacy or propriety of how this went down on the local charges, I don't see a role. The, the state uh, is, you know, look, these are separation of powers. The federal government does what it does. States do what they do. 
Let's talk about for a minute, Jim, if we could, the, what the state did here. I think a lot of people are upset because of the lack of transparency. If you want to cut a deal with Jesse Smollett because you believe he's a first-time offender, he's a person who's done significant things for the community, you think this is an appropriate disposition, then do that. By all means, do it. But don't disguise it in the manner in which you did and, you know, really suggesting and otherwise dismissing the charges. Just come out and say, look, we believe that this disposition is appropriate. He's a first-time, you know, offender, so to speak. We've resolved it. We're going to forfeit his bail. We're going to have him do community service and we feel that based upon his past community involvement mm -hmm. it's good yeah, and that kind of thing happens all the time it right does. I mean, local prosecutors make judgments and say listen it's a crime we believe it's a crime but when you look at the broader response yeah. to crimes like this often folks don't go to jail for it right yes I mean, they, they do that across the board yes but there's one caveat here and I'll say it this way what we do you normally do we being defense attorneys we march in prior to indictment before a case gets indicted, once a case gets indicted, it's in a world of its own. Mm -hmm. You want a deal, you come in before that. We can speak about diversion. We can speak about alternative sentencing. We can speak about anything. Once you go into the grand jury, you marshal the police, you marshal the witnesses. Generally, it's a done deal. Not to suggest that the case is not otherwise resolved, right. but it generally is not resolved in the manner in which it was resolved here. Okay, that's so, the problem. So, so feds get involved now. They, they can only look at the, at the letter because it involved using, using the mail system. Right. Charges likely there? How I, often is, is something like that? Charged? I mean, certainly, you know, look, the federal government has a role here as it relates to that. And certainly they could pursue, independent of what the state does, any charges related to using the mails for fraudulent means or fraudulent purposes. That's completely within their jurisdiction. If they want to do that, that's their prerogative. But again, to be investigating the internal doings and nuances of the office, it becomes a problem. I think that there could have and should have been more transparency. And then to suggest that, well, there's 40,000 felonies, so we, we want to resolve it in that way. I agree. But if there are 40,000 felonies, why do you take this felony to the grand jury to begin with? Work it out in the beginning. Tell the public this is what we believe to be appropriate disposition. Don't be cryptic about it and don't have to be pushed about it to finally say, we think we could approve okay. the case, but we feel we should have resolved it that so, way. So in the midst of this, you, you have these brothers who are Smollett's alleged accomplices here. Right. They haven't spoken to the public yet. Right. They may very well speak to the public, tell their side of the story. I mean, you're looking at very embarrassing circumstances for, for the prosecutors there because this is not going to go away. No, I, I think it, it will not. And look, they already testified apparently in front of the grand jury. They've told their story in front of the grand jury, they right. being the two brothers you just referenced. And they, they, having told that story, certainly free to be interviewed about what the specifics and dynamics of what they had to say and what their involvement was, what his role, Jesse Smollett's role was, what they actually did, how they conjured up the story. So will, will I do believe be hearing from them moving forward.